Welcome to the Wisdom Check by Tabletop to Keyboard. This is going to be our bi-weekly podcast where we discuss things such as Dungeons and Dragons. Actually, I think maybe we need to turn up my mic a little bit, guys. How about some more game? More game. This is the Wisdom Check. Intro to end all intros. Talk about dungeons, dragons, and kids. Now, now, I don't think that's proper. This is a family show, after all. This is the intro we can use, fellas. It's good, clean fun for everyone. Welcome to the Wisdom Check, where we have wholesome conversations about the dilemmas we face every day. Nah, 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 hold on a second. I got your intro right here. Yeah, that's better. Welcome to the Wisdom Check. Well, I'm right, just wrong. We're going to have guests on to talk about it. It's going to be awesome, because I said so. He is right. He did say so. I don't know. Is surf music the best music for a podcast about D&D? Fuck yeah. Okay. This just in, nobody can agree on our intro for this podcast, so we're just going to start. Welcome to the Wisdom Check. Roll for initiative. Fuck. A one. It's like every time. All right. Well, <laughs> his time jump is complete. He achieved... <laughs> The 1.21 gigawatts of power needed to come from the future from New Zealand <laughs> here to with us now. He's back in 7 1 2019. <laughs> yeah, from, that's from tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, this is Where Reagan, the DM from Getting Dicey. So, yeah, this is, it's weird. So it's like 2nd of July in the afternoon here, but I'm talking with the past. <laughs> it's a weird, yeah, we weird situation. Man. Future boy. I'm going to get a different costume, you know, like old timey style, you know, come in here, steampunk, be like, well, hello there, sir. How are you from the future? A little monocle, a little monocle in a pipe. Ah, so this is what the past is like. Absolutely. Oh, so good. So uh, we got you here finally, which is awesome. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, we usually go about the usual questions to start off. So uh, a lot of people like to know how people got into gaming in general. And, uh, you know, how long they've been at it. So when did you get your start? Yeah, I am I am so fresh to this. It's crazy. Um, I remember back when I was maybe 15. So that's a good 20 something odd years ago now nice. being introduced to it. Um, and I was already peak nerd, like glasses and, uh, <laughs> you know, acing all my classes and doing homework really well and being oh, a boy. teacher's pet and all that kind of stuff. And the last thing I needed was to have D and D as well as all of that. And so I remember my mate going, Hey, do you want to check this out? And here's what, how it goes. And I was just like, you know, I'm cool, man. I'm good. I don't need that <laughs> on top of everything else. Um, and then like, so two years ago, uh, of a friend of mine was saying how he had been playing D and D and that they might have a spot opening up because they play online um, using roll 20, uh, mm -hmm. once a week. And I was like, you know what? It's about time. It's about time. He taught me through making my first character. Um, and like within a couple of hours of that first session, my mind was just blown. I was like, how have I not <laughs> been doing this? How have I just, how have I not? Cause I'm, I'm right into board games, right into video games as well. Mm -hmm. And it just felt like this, uh, this freedom of, of, of that no other type of game has. It is really um, unique, isn't it? You know, like every game yeah. that is curated for you just is on rails to some capacity because it's it's scripted. You know, like a video yeah. game is scripted a little bit. You know, anything else you get into. Board game is essentially kind of quasi-scripted within the rules. But yeah, mm. Tabletop is its own unique beast of just pure madness and chaos and creativity and just goodness. <laughs> yeah. And it was having it was having a DM that really rewarded just because I didn't know I was, I was testing the boundaries of what you could and couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just being rewarded for doing the sort of crazy things. Uh -huh. And it just, it, it just became quite addictive. Um, Beautiful. and then I was sitting there just, and then, and then moving into streaming, it was really just like a, well, we're already doing this online. And if I'm enjoying playing this as much as I'm enjoying playing it, maybe, maybe someone will, will enjoy watching it. And it was like, no effort, just putting it all into OBS and spitting it out into Twitch, having 
never even touched the Twitch platform before, you know? So yeah, that sounds pretty familiar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was about how we jumped into it also. We were like, you know, this is so much fun. Other people would love this too. Right. Like mm. this has got to be awesome. Right. Like, so then you yeah. get on there and you're like, let's put that out there and see if it flies. And then yeah. what happened then? So, well, I, I hadn't heard of critical role. I had, like I said, I hadn't even touched, touched D and D, uh, until two years ago. Um, and we put that out there and we realized, you know, that we would, would get like a few people watching and a few people commenting. And mm -hmm. that was kind of um, all we needed to decide would put in a bit more effort on the, you know, the production side of things. Um, Boy, have you. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've put in a lot of effort. Um, Let's give some bring... examples of that for people who may not know about your channel. Yeah, yeah tell, okay. us little, um, tell us a little yeah, bit so... about what you do. Okay, what do we do? Well, we do all the typical. I, uh, okay, so first thing that you need to know about New Zealand. Um, we're really, we're really subtle. We're really kind of dry and quiet and we don't like speaking over each other. We're quite polite. We're very monotone. We don't do much. Um, so <laughs> yeah. So we thought going into this, this is going to be, no one's going to watch it because we're all just like, okay, so I'm going to roll the dice now and that's a hit and that's eight damage. And like, no one was going to watch that. And our DM that we had previously, he was great. Um, but even his NPCs were still had that kind of really Kiwi nature to them. Mm -hmm. um, I took over DMing at the start of this year because our DM wanted to play uh, mm -hmm. and no one else in the crew wanted to DM. And I had never, I mean, like I said, I'd only been playing for two years. Well, at that point, just uh, around two years. Um, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, and I just jumped in. Um, but I've got a bit more of a background with... Um, with theater and acting and stuff like that. So I uh, saw it more of a chance as to like, Oh, well, I don't know the rules, but I can sure put on a voice uh, and like yeah. bring some NPCs to life. Um, and then in, in our first, in our first proper episode, bringing in the goblins that you meet in the lost mine of Fandalver, it was fun to sort of bring them to life and create these really cocky, stupid little beings. Um, <laughs> but uh, the thing that we sort of added onto it as well was, um, I've got a, a background in, you know, uh, art and mm -hmm. video editing and, and 3d animation and all this kind Man, of stuff. So yeah. <laughs> it, really, it really does. And it was just saying, oh, well, if I wanted to bring in, um, faces for these NPCs, cause it's much easier to put on a, I find it as a Kiwi, much easier to put on a voice if you can't see me. So it was fun to be able to put, a, um, an overlay up with a little mouth cut out and just have my mouth centered underneath that <laughs> cutout hole and put on these voices. And if you um, haven't watched it, it works way better than you can imagine just hearing it right now. Let me tell you, like you have to see it. It really is something you have to see. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun because like um, none of the players knew that it was coming either. So it was something that I just threw out there. <laughs> nice. So you see the reactions when it first goes down and they're all very authentic reactions, which is great. So, okay. So one of the things I like doing as a DM is breaking, breaking my characters, bringing them out of role playing and just uh, making them laugh. So that's, that's always a bit of fun. Um, <laughs> the other things we do, one of our guys, when he, uh, a, a good friend of mine, I finally brought him in on it because I was having so much in our last campaign and he joined in towards the end of our last campaign. Um, and he loved it so much. Uh, he was, he's into video games. He's into Warhammer and stuff like that um and he suddenly realized this was going to take over his life more than his warhammer like painting figurines and all this kind of stuff which is shocking and it is <laughs> yeah he, he was right into it he's got he's got amazing uh, amazingly painted miniatures um and this just really brought him in and within a few weeks he started showing up with this homemade armor that he started building mm -hmm. just out of cardboard painted up cardboard to make it look uh, metal and stuff like that mm -hmm. and i think now he's on his um third iteration of armor and he's he's it just looks amazing he's made it a does. um he made a sculpt of his head and his upper body like a paper mache kind of thing right. of it so that he could mold the armor to it properly uh and now it's <laughs> it's all piecemeal and it just looks amazing you only it see does. like this much of him but he's got like greaves and boots and oh, the whole yeah. the whole kit and then he started making his weapons that his character had. Um, yeah. And then a few of our characters started bringing green screens so they could all uh, adjust to make it look like they were where our characters were. Um, and then more recently, um, my wife plays as well. 
and she doesn't have much of a history with uh, um like software computer software but i sort of told her about how you can download like a computer version of snapchat and make your mm-hmm. own filters um and she just became obsessed with being able to put together uh some filters for our goliath character as well as her alvin character and so oh, they beautiful. go live with actual snapchat things that track their eyes and face and head and everything and it just it looks great we're all, we've all it got really does going it on. really puts them all into character it really is as yeah. i said you are one of the most in my opinion technically sound twitch streams on for for dungeons and dragons that i watch i watch a lot of shows and there's a lot of great role players out there and there's a lot of great stories being told by these various people that i follow and i watch um Mm. and you see them talking all the time in our discord but um none of them push tech stuff quite the same way you do I don't know. So you guys, had, you guys had that amazing um, 3D I, animation that you guys put we, out. Yeah, that's all Clint. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he really, is don't get me wrong. Amazing. I, I wondered if he hadn't like snuck a peek at like one of your guys' shows and is like, <laughs> look what they got! Fight animations. I've, they yeah. got like like it goes to like a cut scene at the beginning, like intros. You've got like all of yeah. it right now. for people that have only been doing this like a year. Like you are on top of it. Like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we do recaps of the previous episodes at the start of every show. We've got like an intro that we've all taken photos for and have animated nicely. And wow, yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's really, it's really cool. But that, that was next level. That was seriously yeah. next level. How much yeah, time are you guys putting in, you know, preparation for your shows? Um, I don't know. I don't think that the I don't think that the players put in too much because they they know that I've I I do pretty Bloody much all the, I, I do all the preparation for the stream because I'm I'm kind of the only really tech savvy one of the bunch. Mm-hmm. The rest are, yeah. are all like physical. They, they if they were, if we were playing in person, I think it would be a different story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I, I uh, cut together an episode of the podcast. Uh, you know, every Saturday morning, and then every Sunday afternoon, I do a recap for the show and um, spend a chunk of Monday after work sort of preparing anything that I need to prepare Mm story-wise. So, I mean, altogether, it's probably two to three hours across the weekend. I I try not to get too hung up on spending too much time. Um, You're uh, doing the Lost Minds of Fandelver, and that is a module. So the story element is taken a little out of your hands, which allows you probably more time to focus on these other things, which, in my opinion, is really, like I said, you guys are a wildly entertaining group to watch. You really are. Just with the filters all the tech stuff your mm-hmm. the the pictures and the voices with your mouth coming out of the characters for the npcs really sells the whole thing and you yeah, a great yeah. job voice acting so i mean it's it's easy to sit there and watch your show like it really yeah, that's is. great that, that's all and we've had um considering the time slot that we we sort of go live at we've had mm-hmm. some pretty decent uh a pretty good reception in regards to that mm-hmm. um pretty much week in week out we'll be out out of the maybe 15 to 20 DD streams that are live when we're live. We're, we're usually sitting at number one, but that doesn't normally equate to high numbers, unfortunately, just well, because right. of just because of the just, time that we're the playing. Just mm-hmm. for our viewers, you're going live at 2 30 in the morning on Mondays <laughs> for yeah. us here in Central Time. So that's 3 yeah. 30 in the morning Eastern. Yep. And just after midnight for people on the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so not, not yeah, you're late, late night for, you yeah. know, most of us. So. Yeah. You know, that's gotta be a, a very big challenge, you know, for streaming. You know, I'm curious, you know, obviously there's an advantage to streaming cause there's a lot less work that goes into it. Um, mm. you know, but I kind of wonder what the, the kind of production and stuff you're doing, would YouTube possibly be a better avenue for you? Mm. And we do put all of our VODs uh, onto YouTube like um, mm-hmm. the next day after after we've done streaming. Um, mm-hmm. And we, like I said, I think in our first month, we had like 10,000 watched minutes from, wow. um, Which is from what we put up. But that's dropped off hugely recently. All it takes mm-hmm. is like one person that finds it and, mm-hmm. and they, they seem to love it. And they'll spend the next four days watching everything. And we'll just have a massive spike in minutes. Mm-hmm. But it only really equates to one person sitting <laughs> down and watching it. So right. good in regards to how much they watch, but not good for well, how, how much, um, so I don't know, how many people are seeing it. So this is kind of an interesting thing. because this is, And this is your topic you kind of want to bring up tonight, mm. is talking about the different distribution methods of mm-hmm. when you're putting together a product like this, how do you get it out in front of people? And, yeah, you know, I think that the interesting thing about YouTube is that 
when you're done with an episode, if you connect it back to your Twitch or mm-hmm. you connect it back to something else, for me, it it's kind of like when I binge shows on Netflix. Mm-hmm. If I find a show that I like and it's currently running every week, like Game of Thrones is a good example. I didn't start out at Game of Thrones in season one. I started out in right. Game of Thrones in season five. So I went back to one, binge watched until I got up to current. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you know what I did? I started watching every week. So yeah. I would go from being a YouTube watcher of yours mm-hmm. to a Twitch watcher of yours. Right. Yeah. If you and were we, in a we time zone that I could do that. <laughs> yeah. And that's the big thing, right? So we have, we've definitely had a couple of um, other New Zealand, uh hear about us, watch our previous stuff, and then they'll join us on a Monday night. And that's great. Right. But we're not a big country. I'm not going to, we're not going to, when you think of, <laughs> how small D and D is just in New Zealand. Oh man, it's not going to equate to many people who also want to watch it live online on a gaming streaming channel. Like it's yeah. really, really strange. I've, I have contemplated whether or not we should be going live on like going live on YouTube and going live on Facebook where mm. I've heard the numbers would be higher, but the re- like retaining those numbers, like the same people week in week out might be a bit harder. Yeah, um, that's I, true. I yeah. think, I think those platforms lend themselves to people stopping in for 10 minutes and then disappearing. Right. Um, well, and and I think some of, what you're facing, sorry, yeah. some of what you're facing is that, you know, obviously you're English speaking, but mm. most of the people in that time zone probably aren't. I mean, there's a huge population of people that may be interested in the material, but, mm. you know, that's it's, right. That's right. You guys in Australia, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. so it's like, yeah. you know, it's like, okay, well, small slice. Um, yeah, even the pretty much all of Europe is twelve hours behind us. So you're looking mm-hmm. at people that are seven thirty in the morning. They're off to go to, on a Monday. They're off to work. You know, they're not going to have a have Twitch open or anything like that. I think right. the most dedicated fan we used to have. He hasn't. He got married and we haven't seen him since. Um, oh, that <laughs> he was happens. he was based on. <laughs> I think he was based on the east coast uh, of the US. Wow. Um, and he'd be uh, he'd be up at. He'd watch us from start to finish. He'd be like, all right, guys, it's okay. six in the morning. I'm off to bed. And it's just like, this is beautiful. This guy loved us. Um, and he created like a little stats page for what was going on. Oh, um, no. we, wow. So we fan. knew it was only a matter of time before. Like, you, you can't you can't sustain someone watching you from two or three night in the morning. Somewhere. Yeah. yeah. He's a night shipper, <laughs> you know. Maybe there's a possibility. But. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, Twitch has been it's been really interesting. Like I said, we're normally at the top, if not the top, when it comes to live streams for the time slot. But mm-hmm. those numbers are not large. I think when we went live last night, um, it was I think there were sixty four people watching D and D streams. Like that's wow, it. Wow, just sixty four. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's small. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, but you know, we, we, how many are you getting in that time slice? You were saying like 15 or something like that? Yeah, we average anywhere between 15 and 20, I think. Which is um, really an incredible percentage. Yeah, like, it, yeah, it. like, yeah. yeah, absolutely. A lot of them are quiet, but we've got a lot of, uh, of that. We've got maybe five or six every time that are incredibly vocal and mm-hmm. um, supporting us with cheers. And, and um, so we've got a system where uh, we've got a little countdown that we've just added on to the stream now that um, every chair knocks down a little... A uh, little timer, I guess. And when it hits zero, uh, they spawn um, a, a goblin. Well, it's a hobgoblin now. It's come. Oh. It's become like a bit of a, a recurring using character. Oh, and you use raid boss. Is that raid oh. boss you're using for that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Or right. stream stream boss, I think. Stream yeah. boss, mm-hmm. yeah, where you can yeah. name it. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, and so that's that's working pretty well, and it's definitely ramping up the support. Um, but realistically, <laughs> if we want to see more support, we need to we need to do like a Saturday morning our time kind of thing, something. Yeah. Uh, but we've just got a bunch of dads uh, <laughs> with families and kids, and it's getting them up right. on a Saturday morning to stream is just not is not going to happen. Real we life, man. It's tough. Those struggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's kind of like Monday night for us is a really. You know, long weekends don't get in the way, public holidays and stuff like that. You know, everyone's already back mm-hmm. from a public holiday. It's everyone, I don't know, it just works. The mm-hmm, only thing right. it doesn't work for is, is spreading the word. <laughs> what you need to do is you got to start doing some networking and reach out to some of those people in the time slot right before you. Like I have a guy that runs a game on Twitch now. He'd gone to DLive for a while. He's back on Twitch playing his game and he'll get five to 10 viewers at any point in time during his stream. Mm-hmm. So I'll reach out to him because his game ends. He's on the West Coast. So his game it, like begins at midnight my time and usually ends sometime between one to two. Mm. So if he's on at the time that when you guys start, I'll see if he'll start raiding and dumping viewers on. It's not you. a bad idea. I'll see if I can get him to do that. That's one of the things I've been trying to work on a lot with our networking here at 
TT2KB is. Uh, you guys, you guys are doing a great job. The, well, starting you. to line people up for yeah. the raids and things like that. So, yeah, but I'm, I'm not up in the middle of the night like I used to be all the time. I used to catch yeah. you every like live every now and then, and now I have to I have to vod you every week because I don't yeah. <laughs> keep up otherwise. Uh, so <laughs> I really appreciated that because you you got in touch with us quite early on. To be honest, yeah. I think you were one of our earlier sort of regular um, viewers as well. And getting in contact and sort of saying, "Hey, we're opening up a Discord. Come and be a part of that." Like really, really early on, it was great. Um, yeah, and so I, like I, I said, I didn't realize you were that new to it at the time. Because watching your show, <laughs> you would have never known. Like, I feel like such a fraud because um, <laughs> I, I really, really need the books by me, and I don't understand the the differences between all the first edition, second edition, third, fourth. I don't know all the nuances. I don't know what mm -hmm. Pathfinder is, all of these different you things. Don't need it's to, okay, yeah. man, because this yeah. is a different thing. You know, like yeah. playing around the table by yourself. Yeah, you, you need that stuff. But really what we're doing online is more of an, I mean, obviously you're playing a game for yourself, but mm -hmm. we're creating a form of entertainment. You know, and if, if you're putting out good production, you're, you're entertaining, you're personable, um, mm. you know, that's what people are tuning in for the interaction, sure. you know, all that kind of stuff. And it sounds like you guys have that just completely unlocked, you know? Yeah. And, uh, we, we all really, really like what we've done. I think the last two episodes we've had has probably had some of the best, uh, role play that we've had yet. Um, nice. just because uh, we've all, especially myself as a DM being able to understand the nuances a lot more now than, than I did when I first started doing this pretty recently. Mm -hmm. Um, being able to build in, you know, characters' backstories and in, in, in a meaningful way, um, mm -hmm. and I, for the first, I, I'm I'm proud of this. For the first time, we had legitimate tears out of out of someone last wow, night. Wow! Really? Wow! Yeah. What yeah, kind of scene was it? I haven't seen that episode yet. Don't spoil it for me. I won't I spoil. Gotta, it. I won't spoil. I have to it. watch it later on. But so. Don't spoil yeah, it. Though. What yeah. kind of scene was it? Was it a happy tears, sad tears? No, no. It was it was bringing in um, a, a, a character from someone's backstory. Um, where there was already a kind of uh, a jealousy or, or a hatred because of um, what the uh, what they were born into and what their own character was born into, and oh, wow. basically taking more from that character. Um, huh. And it was yeah, it was great. It was great. The the Love player it. had no idea what I was doing with that character, but I just had permission to bring in someone from their past. It was it was uh, seriously good. Oh, but yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So you said you guys started on Twitch, or did you guys try another platform first? Uh, we we just played um, we played for a good maybe six months before we started streaming, and, mm -hmm. and that was just me under getting to know the rules and understanding Roll Twenty and all of that yeah. kind of stuff. But we just went straight, curve. yeah, yeah. And so we went straight to um, uh, Twitch once we decided to stream, and it was purely because I was just like, I didn't even I didn't even know what Twitch was. I think in one of our earlier episodes <laughs> in our previous campaign. Someone uh, put a, a um, Twitch emote in, and I think it was like the po uh, Poggers, or <laughs> I think it is, right? And I remember someone yelling out Poggers, and none of us knew the lingo from Twitch. I, and I have no that, idea what that is. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think it comes from the fact that like Twitch generally is is really video games focused, and the video yeah. game aspect of Twitch is is crazy. The the uh, the community yeah. they've got all understand this mm -hmm. completely different language. Um, that you're a normal video gamer or any tabletop gamer just was, would not understand. Mm -hmm. So sure. we were coming in like feeling really like we were touching something and we felt like um, we were so out of touch with what technology we were using and the software, as well as me feeling quite out of touch with just it, what I was playing. Um, mm -hmm. So it was really interesting. It was a really interesting experience. And it was just understanding peace. I would, uh, I did what like, what I feel like, oh, like, like grandparents would do when they're like, what is an email? Like typing into <laughs> Google, things, just the most simple things to, to people who are a bit more familiar with the, with the software, with the, with the platform. Yeah, so, I hear that. One of the yeah. things I find about Twitch is the reason why I like Twitch more than YouTube is because Twitch is people. And I'm a yeah. people person. I mm -hmm. can deal with people. I can go and make friends and reach out to Jowson and Chuck from Defenders of Cobalt, and you, and I can mm. bring these people in, and I can talk to them, and I can build relationships. I can go watch their shows. Mm -hmm. I can get them then to reciprocate and come watch ours. I can build viewer base by dealing with people. YouTube frustrates me 
because I can do none of that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's all yeah. algorithm. You're hitting people yeah. and getting viewers based more off of algorithm and mechanics that I don't understand. But mm -hmm. if you just deal with people, I can deal with people. Mm -hmm. Like I like people. People are what I do. Like that's easy. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have a harder time when it comes to making something that flies on YouTube than I do. Yeah, I think with YouTube, there are similar tactics you can use. So like for us, we're, we're building this Discord channel that a lot of you guys, especially in the audience, are participants in. And, you know, obviously that's giving opportunities that don't normally present themselves for YouTube, you know, for interaction and talking about it and sharing each other's content. And, and obviously that's going to channel people over there. Um, now, the, the missing step, I think, is that some of the, the secret sauce is talking to people about what they're into. Oh, and yeah, if you're sure. approaching somebody about your own content, that's not the same as approaching them and getting excited about what they're doing. Right. Mm. So, yeah, I think that is the big difference with YouTube versus Twitch. You know, mm. for YouTube, um, Kodo, uh, Clint, the guy that did that awesome intro the other day, and he was mm. taking care of all of our tech stuff back here. Um, you know, he and I started doing YouTube at the same time, and he, we were both doing kind of Fallout 4 stuff. So I was doing a let's play of uh, Fallout 4 Frost, and he did a lot of like build stuff. So we had different audiences, but it was similar game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just trying to learn what worked and what didn't, you know, making thumbnails, um, how to tag things, building descriptions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're first starting on YouTube, there's just, it feels like a brick wall that you're up against. You know, like you can't search for your own videos and find them. I couldn't That's find my own the channel. most depressing thing at the moment. Typing in the name <laughs> of one of my and it and, and it just not appearing. Nothing like, comes up. There'll be yeah. like four or five things, and it's not one of those four things. Yeah. You're like, how is that possible? I know it exists. <laughs> you type yeah. the exact title of your video, and it doesn't come up. You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a threshold you have to pass before you'll start to appear. Right. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. But which um, is, like I said, algorithms. Mm -hmm. I can't beat algorithms. <laughs> no. No. We, but I, I hear what you're saying, um, Jeff, because we've started putting, we've finally started putting up thumbnails. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it helps make things feel a bit better. All of our recaps have the same sort of style. All of mm -hmm. our episodes have their own style. Mm -hmm. But I've just, I've just come to realize, and I don't know why I didn't think sooner, but what I would do is I would literally just take what was on Twitch, mm -hmm. cut off the starting soon section and just put that on YouTube. So you'd right. have us all talking to um, the, the audience that was no longer live. You'd hear us finally get into the game. You'd get to our break and we'd be talking through our break just about whatever, getting back into the game right through to when we stopped broadcasting. And I just realized uh, recently that you can trim out bits in mm -hmm. the YouTube editor. Um, and so now I've got this mentality of, right, I, need to, I really need to go through each of these videos now and yep. make them watchable for mm -hmm. VOD purposes, not just right. for people who missed the Twitch stream. Yeah, they're a very different audience. Yeah. You know, like like we've been talking about, interaction is the name of the game on Twitch. It's mm -hmm. not the name of the game on YouTube. And so, right. like, for the content I'm doing nowadays on YouTube, I spend a lot of time <laughs> editing. Like, I'll record, like, an hour, hour and a half of gameplay, mm -hmm. and I will hack that thing down to, like, 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, just chopping all the unnecessary stuff, Anything that doesn't have a quick narrative to it, that's not smooth, you know, mm. that's gone. You know, if I feel like the energy lulls, it's out, you know. Yeah, and yeah. It's an art form. Like, I sucked at it when I started. You know, you're, you're like, well, what does the audience want? I have no idea. You know, like, mm. I like this stuff, but the audience doesn't, you know. So right. I spent a lot of time staring at the analytics. Right. Which yeah. will make you go mad. If, you, if you've spent yeah. any time with YouTube analytics, yeah. guys, it's, it's a puzzle box. Like, you look at things, you see trends, but then... You've got a limited audience, so you really got a small sample, and mm. like the numbers don't make any sense. And then you're like, "Really, this many of my audience are men? Like, how is that possible that like 99% <laughs> of my audience is male? <laughs> like, yeah, they're all 24 to 35. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's how it goes. Yeah, it is. It is how it goes. And it's one of the things I found interesting got like 50 50 split of um men to woman on our podcast through spotify mm -hmm. that's like because now yeah. that you're breaking into like different parts of where you can yeah. store uh podcasts that one i was actually legitimately um surprised by i don't know why i was surprised by that but i was i mean i, I shouldn't mm -hmm. be surprised because i follow the getting dicey twitter you know we follow a lot of um 
Twitch broadcasters, and there's heaps. There's so many women in this in mm -hmm. um, that are playing, and it's so so good to see. Oh, absolutely. Um, and it's just weird that on YouTube it doesn't seem to reflect that. Well, it's because of the nature of the audience that YouTube and Twitch built. So, mm -hmm. like, I, I looked into a, some of the like what the platform demographics look like, and mm -hmm. YouTube is hugely stacked One Direction, and Twitch ah, excessively okay. so. Um, when you when you go online, and you look at what people are searching for YouTube. It's the most stereotypical thing you would ever imagine. So, like, yeah, whatever yeah. you think of as like stereotype for the male or the female, that's what they're looking for. And yeah. you know, the audiences for video games, sports. Uh, workouts, uh, you know, these sorts of things, all men. It's like 99% yeah. men. And in particular, video games is like 99 to 100% men. Like people yeah, who well, watch I mean, it. Not that's people why when it. you look at what the commercials are that play before your Twitch stream <laughs> or when you look at the commercials that play in the middle of the day on TV during the soap operas, like it's it's no confusion why those products are being placed where they're being placed. Like they know who mm -hmm. their viewers yeah. are during those times yeah. of day who's watching those kinds of shows like and I, and think, I think it trans those things translate true into digital formats like youtube and mm -hmm. twitch as well mm -hmm. i think twitch in particular was built up around like competitive video games that's right you know, call of duty and your dota and league of legends and that kind of stuff where there's a bit of a more toxic kind of style to it a little bit more trash talk you know yeah. and that really rubs, you know, people wrong unless you're the particular slice demographic. And if your whole mm. platform's built around that, it's kind of baked into the cake that that's who's your audience. You know, how do you find how do you find your communities while you guys are playing? Do you guys interact? I, I see you guys a couple of times. We'll keep an eye on what's being said in the. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's hard when you're playing uh, D and D <laughs> to be in the moment, but also be tracking what's happening with your mm -hmm. live audience. But do you, I think we've only had maybe one or two instances where I've just just hit the block button like straight away. Do you guys get much of that? We've been uh, really lucky so far. No, we've. I don't think we've had to block anyone in our community. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we're waiting for it. it it's we, bound to happen at some point. But we, we were actually just discussing this today because Jeff wrote up some rules for our Discord. You know, just community rules. And sure. I was like, you know, we do we need these yet? Like, we haven't had a problem. Like, I guess we should yeah. put them out there before we have a problem. But like, so far, like we, we they, they would just sit there. You know, like uh, we we built a pretty good community so far. Like, we haven't had a problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you. Really I'm a bit. Don't. I'm a bit sort of. Um, is, is it, I find it weird that people put rules up on their Twitch and Discords and stuff like that. It's like everyone knows the rules. Everyone knows not to be an asshole. Everyone knows just to be nice to everybody. Everybody knows. Yeah. You just have to have something there to tell them. Like that's know. the funny thing about you. I think that's the thing about laws, right? People who yeah. obey the laws don't need laws. Yeah, that's not right. what they're written for. And laws don't stop a behavior; they just give you a guideline of what to do once something is broken that everyone sure. already agreed to. So, like, yeah. there's no yeah. question about is this the right thing we're doing right now? Yeah, I, I think I think of it like a little harsher. I, I'm, I'm kind of like, look, you don't need to be. No one needs to be told not to be a dick when they come and watch us. Um, and if you are, you're gone. You, there's no warning. There's no piece of text that says you have right. to be nice. You you know it. And if you're going to just come in and be annoying, you're gone. Yeah. There's no, mm -hmm. it'll only be like a 24 hour thing, but it's, it's there. It's like, you don't get to watch us tonight and that's, that's right. fine. Yeah. Which for you means a week. They don't get to watch you. For a week. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, yeah. They you miss us. wait a whole week to come back. So you're in, you're in time yeah. out for a week. Like it's, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. The tricky yeah. thing about those sorts of encounters though, is if you block somebody temporarily, um, are they going to attack your other channels or are they going to spam right, your, right. Your, your accounts elsewhere with other messages? Or are they going to recruit other people to do it? Like, mm. uh, I, I help moderate a discord channel for an arc server and we had somebody come in and just spamming the N word like repeatedly, oh, wow. like just huge block of text for mm. about, you know, three or four minutes solid, just over and over and over and over. Mm. And it was just like, okay, block okay hmm. and ban okay they're gone and then two or three minutes later we had four people doing it that we had never seen before hmm. block, 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 block. now we have 10 people doing it it's right, like what right. happened well he dropped our channels link into all the official channels and asked people to do it right so wow. like holy crap what do you do about that <laughs> you know yeah so i don't know i really i really don't know doing, you know yeah i mean i think for us like 
you know, we're building our community a little differently. Mm -hmm. Um, we're not a platform that's like Dungeons and Dragons is a brand that's worldwide, but Mm -hmm. there's not, but by playing Dungeons and Dragons, you're not reaching that entire platform. You know, mm-hmm. and so our TT2KB, you know, I'm doing my best as kind of promotions guy here at TT2KB. You know, I'm the outreach guy. I'm finding you guys. I'm on the Twitter. I'm on the Facebook. Like, that's where I do my work, you know, for this mm-hmm. group. And I'm reaching out and finding these people, and I'm I'm making those connections with them. And then I slowly convince them to come join us here and, and do these sorts of things. And so I think because we're building in that kind of way, we're mm-hmm. kind of recruiting more than just throwing out invites and getting a bunch of people in because we're playing D and D. Yeah. We're, we're not getting, we're not getting that level of troll sort of mentality coming into our community. So we're not seeing yeah. it show up in our chats. We're not seeing it show up in our discord. You I know, think what really, really everything's been is. pretty, pretty positive, I think in general. Mm. And I think a lot of that is mm. um, just because of the way we're going about it. It's mm-hmm. slower growing that way. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things you can do that it can bring a lot of people in quickly. But one thing I learned um, from my experience in the fraternity world when I was in my college fraternity is that if we threw big parties and invited everybody to it and we handed out bids to everybody there, we would have more trouble and more people we had to kick out than we did by bringing people in that we mm-hmm. got to know first a bit and sure. recruiting and that sort of method. So I've kind of taken that same mentality and adapted it to what I do here. Yeah, And I think yeah, it's, yeah. the results have been pretty good so far. So yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I have no intentions on trying to get too big too quick. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I try to bring in one or two new channels like a month or so and just reaching yeah. out and finding new people. So and what's really yeah. good about that approach, I think, is that most of the people we're reaching out to are content creators themselves. And so right. That's right. You guys aren't going to come onto our channel and be like, F this, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm going to ruin things. Oh, you know, and posting random pics of things and all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. And so as we're developing this community, there's a culture that's forming and solidifying. And so as people add into existing culture, they tend to assimilate. Right. They take on the mm-hmm. qualities of that culture. Whereas if it's just random people showing up that don't know each other and don't have an investment in one another as a community, anything goes. Mm. And so I think that's that's what we're seeing here. Yeah, it's slow growth, but I think um, you know by us watching each other's channels, we're growing all of our channels simultaneously. Mm-hmm. And the appearance of a channel being successful, in the, you know, in terms of hey, they got a lot of viewers right now, draws people's attention. You know, so you're going to get random viewers that are going to pop in, and they're going to see mm-hmm. a whole group of people in that chat chit chatting and hello chat again. Hey, you've been quiet for here for a few seconds, but we know you're there. <laughs> you know, like them being there, they kind of almost act like a moderator. Yeah, right? Even if there isn't an official one. Yeah, right? well, that, that's very much what we're seeing with us as well. We've got the people who are there every week, and they they they're so protective of us playing our game, and they're so supportive of what's mm-hmm. happening. If there's any questions that new people have, we don't have to answer them because we know the people that are there every week are just going to do that for us. It's such a mm-hmm. such a great feeling. It's such a nice feeling. Oh, absolutely. And, and you said you watched, um, well, maybe you didn't actually. I think you said you didn't. But uh, in Critical Role Season 1, they showed all of the chat on their, on their live streams, even <laughs> on their bots. And it was a blur imagine. of just absolute chaos and, yeah. you know, Every other sentence was somebody saying, oh, I could see down so-and-so's shirt, and yeah. oh, that girl's hot, and just saying creepy stuff. And it was oh, just yeah. constant. You seeing the moderators having to jump in. Like They must have had like 30 moderators because mm-hmm. I don't know how anybody kept up with that. It was just absolute pandemonium on there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah, and it I still mean, is today. <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 so this week it's still pandemonium in the chat there. I don't know how. I don't even know why people try. I, really no, yeah, don't, a, don't I, I checked them out. I checked them out a couple of weeks ago, and I was just like, I don't know. You can't. You literally can't. Re- you can't read it. It's moving so fast. So yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, what's the it point? If you can't read it. Yeah, exactly. And even yeah. though when they put it in slow mo, you can't keep up with it. Yeah. And I, I guess it's just people think they see their own name on the internet. Mm. They're famous. Which is another <laughs> weird thing about this, right? Especially if you're showing your chat on your stream, then they get to see their right. name show up on your stream. Like mm. they're more inclined to type it then, even if it's for a split second. So, mm. you know, one thing that's interesting about being a content creator that just blows my mind 
somehow you get treated like a celebrity, even though you're just a dude sitting in your apartment with a camera facing you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you feel that way, but like on my arc stuff, I got people coming up to me all the time and just like, oh, you're a legend. You're like one of the greatest players. I'm like, I suck at this game. Well, you make videos, though. I'm like, no, like you could turn a camera on. <laughs> like, it doesn't mean anything about skill, but uh, okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. I got, had that I got used had... to it years ago. Oh, <laughs> Nice. We um we were really weirded out when we mm-hmm. had our like mega fan that, that dropped into our Discord and was like, oh man, you guys are awesome. Uh, I've made like a I'm, I've been tracking all your stats for every episode, uh, and here and I'm gonna update them every week, and we'll I'll let you know. And it's like five in the morning here, and I'm still watching you guys, and we were just like. Are, are we are we famous to like just like are we actually like celebrities to one person in this planet like it felt really really strange um and then uh, we've got we've got a couple of we, we've we've got a couple of shirt we've got a shirt at the moment that we can you can buy and we've had like a couple of people to buy that as well it's just like like I just put the shirts up because I wanted one of the shirts like yeah, really right that was, that was it yeah we're looking um, at the same thing with the with a mug <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, but at the same time, I get it. Like how many times, like there are video game directors or game designers that Mm -hmm. have only made like one or two games in their life. And I'm just like, done is so good. Uh, I'm Mm -hmm. waiting for the next thing that they make. So I guess it's just a little bit of that just on a really weird, like, um, amateur theater level. I don't know. I don't know. It's odd because it's, I don't know. For me, it's like, I always looked at other people as you know creating content you know like tv shows you know that's a very Mm. exclusive area you have to go through a big process to get involved Mm. there's a lot of positions where you could possibly get weeded out a lot of money up front that you have to invest to get these things going so it's serious serious business and you know these people are famous and special and everybody knows Mm. about them and nowadays we got this crazy platform available to us where you get to skip all of that and Yeah. yeah maybe you don't have a huge slice of audience but you you have the opportunity to develop that audience, mm. whereas that never existed before. Well, yeah. and and I think when you're a smaller channel, kind of like we are in the starting of phase, you're very approachable. People talk in your chat. You have the ability to respond to them. Mm. Um, in situations like this, where we do wisdom check, you know, we directly talk to the people that are if they're chatting. You know, mm. like we will directly talk about what they're saying, even read their stuff on on the show so Mm -hmm. i think in those ways you know people who tune in every week they get to over time get a sense like they feel like they know us yeah Um, yeah they know us in a way um sometimes like i used to watch um i still occasionally tune in not like i used to um i watch a lot of the stuff on collider video for movies i'm a big Mm -hmm. movie buff i do a Uh, lot of movie reviews i do i watch a lot of movies um and so I watched them for about two straight years, pretty much every show they put out on their YouTube channel for two years. I'm actually one of the, uh, what is it? Top viewers comments. Now, if I comment, it says top viewer, like yeah, I nice. got one of those day notations on there. Cause I've watched so damn much of their shows, but after a <laughs> while, like I get to where like, I know like some of the people's daughter's names and stuff. Cause they talk about them. Like, you yeah. know, all this stuff about these people, they don't have the first clue who I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like no no idea but you know all the stuff about them because you bring them basically into your home on a weekly basis or more so totally. uh, you know i think that we have that ability to interact with people on this this format which is why i love twitch so much i think compared mm-hmm. to youtube and these other formats is because i have that ability like i said i'm a people person so that's yeah. why i find myself so much more drawn to this than those other those other systems yeah mm-hmm. i totally get where you're coming from there's there's something it's nice through youtube it's really nice knowing that we downloads through the podcast systems and stuff and stuff like that but having it not turn into an interaction is what mm-hmm. those other two are really really missing yeah, um, yeah just because someone listens to the podcast doesn't mean they'll follow us on twitter or mm-hmm. um pop into the twitch stream right. and and say hi or anything like that or into the discord it's just they are literally just absorbing and moving on with their day being like mm-hmm. oh, i like that and just moving on with your day which is cool it's nice to see that that every download bumps that number up like an extra one right. that's nice mm-hmm. but that interaction is is really Man. something that twitch has i'll now, tell you, you i okay. really hope whoever listens to you on podcast takes time to find you 
on YouTube or on Twitch <laughs> Sounds because like they are lot, missing yeah. out so much of the stuff yeah. you guys do with all the technical stuff. Like I am, I have never just tried to listen to an episode of yours. Maybe I'll do that. This next episode, when I put VOD, I'll turn it on and just there minimize you, you and just try to yeah. listen and yeah. see, but it's gotta be such a different experience than seeing all those yeah. things popping up with the NPC voices and everything else. Like, I don't yeah. know. It adds another layer to it for me, but mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine trying to listen to it without seeing you guys. Yeah. You in, mentioned in that to me um, a few weeks back. Now you were saying that um, you couldn't imagine listening to our stuff and, and, and realistically, like I, I listen to um, every week we put out a new one. I listen to it just to make sure it sounds, it sounds good. Right. Sure. Even though I, the one that edited it together, I still like keeping up with it. Um, and it's made me realize just like YouTube, um, I'm not editing them right. Like I'm cutting out um, all the talk beforehand. I'm cutting out all the talk in the, in the middle. I'm cutting out all the talk at the end and I'm, and I'm deleting a bunch of long silences and stuff like that. But in reality, there's still so many boring moments. Like we have effectively a two and a half hour podcast. And I think I could put that down into an hour easily. I think easily. Mm. And I, then I think I might have to, I think, I might start that journey of just grabbing an episode and updating each episode with a, with a, a cleaner cut, I think. Um, and I think that might make them easier to listen to for people who don't have in their mind what we're doing. Well, and I think it's some of it too, is just the approach, right? So if, mm. if you're stylistically at a table doing a lot of narration and description, mm. you create that theater of the mind. I think that works for a podcast. Whereas if a lot of what you're doing is visual, obviously that Mm -hmm. doesn't translate, you know? So exactly. Yeah. You got to know, I guess your platform and what, what the consumer is likely to take in from that perspective, you know, Mm -hmm. and tailor your content for that. Yeah. Yeah, Cause we didn't start with the idea of podcasts in mind, like at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, And when we decided maybe this is, maybe we can put this out in podcast. I started making sure I described things more just to make sure that again, the other thing we realized is people were watching on Twitch without being next to their the device. Like Mm -hmm. they would be treating it like an audio sort of uh, experience as well. So it's really something that we've just, again, had to adjust to uh, if we do want to continue with podcasts, making sure that we are being a little more detailed, turning off alert sounds, you oh, know, yes. from your Twitch alert oh, sounds. Yes. Ooh, a podcaster doesn't want to hear the jingle every time we got a bit nope. or two, you know? Um, <laughs> Speaking so of which, just... thank you, Fruitzilla, for the sub. Much appreciated. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did we mean to jump over you there, but need to account for that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You can't, you can't ignore the subs. No, That's one of the hardest things um, I find. We, with going to the podcast, now we only mention, like, thanking the subs in the middle of the show and at the end of the show. And I used to really, really enjoy doing it. <laughs> during the show Mm -hmm, um yeah but with the idea of it going into podcast form i just can't do that um and it i feel like that does take away a little bit of that user experience for sure you haven't had any problem getting bits donated and stuff though i mean you you met your goals to get your stream i mean and you met it without really seem like too much trouble so i mean you're getting a lot of good donations in we're doing really well we we uh, again i've seen a lot of um, streamers just quite openly ask for money Mm, and right. asking for money is not something that I don't know. Again, Kiwis, we don't like asking for help. We don't. We especially yeah, don't right. like asking for money. It's a very, <laughs> very strange feeling. But I was talking to a community manager um, for a video game studio, and they were saying, "You just you need to do it. Every stream, it's expected in, on Twitch. People just do it. They right. have a donate button. They mm-hmm. they ask people to subscribe. They kind there's kind of an expectation that the content creators will ask or not, not big, but ask for money, you know, to do something for money. <coughs> so I was taking, I was taking a look at, um, I don't know if you guys have seen hyper RPG. Um, uh, they, no, I don't so they, they, they do tabletop RPGs as well. Um, and they've got a system, although the numbers are hugely inflated where it's like pay a hundred dollars. It's like stress. And I was like, people are doing this, um, but yeah. pay a hundred dollars and you can dictate a small DM moment. And so you oh, just uh, yeah. click the donate button, type in, um, I think in the 15 minutes I was watching them, the first time I watched them, someone did it. It was like $100, create a, a, um, a collapse in the cave you're in. And they just dealt yep. with that collapse within like three minutes. Wow. And the person had paid $100 just to get that three-minute moment in the stream. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so how can, I, how can we take on something like that that's not 
that doesn't feel as dirty as that. Um, right. <laughs> uh, and so, well, so we we brought on a, like a couple of things, which is you can buy inspiration points for players or NPCs. Right. So um, cool. if you spend 200 bits, you can give a, an NPC or one of the players inspiration. Even if they've already got one, it can double up so they can kind of accrue them. Uh, and then we move to uh, for every ten dollar um, donation or chair, there would be um, Billy Goblin would show up, and that you'd would be continuing <laughs> this side story with Billy, Billy Goblin. Goblin. Billy so Goblin. Uh, but it got to a point where in one session, someone spawned it like four times. Oh, and I was like, yeah. oh, this is breaking. Now we're we're not really progressing with the story. It's slowing down the mm, progress. Right. Um, so we've uh, made some adjustments and we've put it out to like the equivalent of $25 worth of bits. Mm -hmm. And we're, we may not be seeing him every session now, but because of the stream boss technique, people are working towards it every session. We're yeah. seeing bits come in and it's not interrupting yeah. the game as much, but people are feeling like they're getting that interaction and there's like kind of a, a second story sort of unraveling as it goes, which is, yeah. which is a really cool. It's a really um, smart way of doing it. I've yeah, seen... I've seen people doing a lot of things with it. I've seen um, several channels where you can give advantage or disadvantage based on bit donations. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. one stream I'm watching. Um, I don't know if any of them are here watching tonight. Uh, some of them talk like they might. I haven't seen them in chat yet. Uh, guys from the Grouch Couch. They actually have a deck of many things, and if you donate uh, a certain amount cool. of bits, they will pull right there on the spot from the deck of many things. That's and really cool. It's like, it's, it's wild, wild though. I mean, it's, yeah. it's flying by the seat of your pants right there yeah. at that point. Like DM what's, players, what's everybody's like, very... how much, how much does someone have to pay to, to create something like that? Well, that's, you, that's my interest. You get, you get a certain, I think it's like eight bucks for a car. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Like cool. It's, but it's, um, they have different ways they go about doing it. If you host them, so like if if your channel's hosting theirs, you gain points and stuff. They have like a whole system set up. It's kind of neat, but yeah, but I've seen a awesome. lot of people doing these kinds of things in order to entice donations and stuff coming in. So yeah, yeah again, those are things you can strange. do on Twitter or on Twitch. You can't do you can't do in any other format. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. totally. Well, I mean, I guess you can associate it with a Patreon, right? And I think a yeah. lot of YouTubers do that. Um, you know, and this is a thing. Like you're saying, your culture in New Zealand is this way, and I, I think that's a very Midwestern. Okay. style as well like we don't like to ask for help or ask for money and i mean it really has the feeling of panhandling you know like yeah you know yeah. it's like i'm that like guy in a subway with a saxophone with a you know asking for money you know it's like uh this feels wrong but you know i'm looking at the chat and people are saying no way you know ask for it and i yeah. guess it's like tips right and it is yeah really it's i guess if you think about it nobody's obligated to spend money right and yeah it's people spending money because they want to, you know, mm -hmm. like, and, and I, I guess once I start breaking it down to the idea of, um, if somebody went out to get entertainment for two hours, mm. how much would that cost them? I went to the movies in America. It's like ludicrous, right? It's like two people go out. It's like 30 bucks or some crazy right. nonsense, you know, or you go to the bar and you spend it on drinks. And before you know it, you're $50 deep in a, to drinks. Mm. That's something you don't get back. That's, that's just gone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, you know, and or you watch TV, you pay for subscriptions to your your networks and stuff like that, or you're renting movies or whatever. Mm. And I mean, if people like what you're doing and they want to be part of it in whatever capacity right. they can, this mm. is their opportunity. Besides just chatting, is to to donate money, I guess. And so mm. for me, I do struggle with that. It does feel weird, and I don't want to put anything behind like a paywall or like yeah. restrict sure. things from people because that feels kind of dirty. Yeah, especially since Twitch is now introducing their um, subscriber-only streams. If yeah. you've got a certain account or something, and I'm just like, like, oh, that's 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 really at a point where I wouldn't feel comfortable um, putting something to subscribers only if you've been following it for ages, but you don't have the subscribe. I'm not going to keep well, a chunk of the story away from you. You know, that seems. Um, By slab in our chat, he brought up Patreon. Mm -hmm. And just to mm -hmm. kind of segue off of what you're talking about, when I was watching Collider, they would do um, a movie trivia schmodown every week. And mm -hmm. actually two nights of the week, they do a movie trivia schmodown. And I'd watch these. I watched every episode for two years. And um, what they started doing with their Patreon was if you were a certain level subscriber, there were certain like bigger events they started doing. Mm -hmm. Then it was kind of loosely based off of like WWF, WWE wrestling. 
So they would have like events every so often, like their WrestleMania and their SummerSlam sort of thing. Well, you would get it a week early. So everyone mm, else would okay. get to see it, but people who were Patreon supporters got it, you know, yeah, a that's a smart approach. Week earlier than everybody else. And yeah, like, yeah. Because they had like a wheel with different categories. If you if you were a Patreon supporter, you could sponsor one of the wheel wedges, things like that. So they're like they had yeah, other ways right. that you could as a as a person get involved with what was going on. So I've seen DMs do this similarly, where if you're a Patreon supporter or if you're a um bit donator, like you can sit down with the DM between sessions and help create an NPC. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like doing it before. So it's not in the middle of the game, ruining your flow. And as yeah. DM, you have the opportunity to meet a fan, sit down and talk with them, incorporate yeah. their idea into this game. And then they get to sit back in your next episode and watch that thing come to life. So yeah. those are kind of that's, things you can take away. Maybe as a way to do that. Like That's one of the things I've been, uh, I've incorporated it into the stream, but no one's done yet. And that's, and I think it's because we're still so small. But it's like if you want to spend a twenty dollar donation, you get to give the name and traits to a character. Even tell me what kind of voice you want me to give them, and they <laughs> they it will be someone that I bring into the next that next episode. So that's I think that's again like a it's a really cool way to to support us, but also gets like something really decent out of it. It's not mm-hmm. something quite personalized, um, especially knowing uh, that I I, t- I take this really seriously. Like I. Just uh, like with the episode recently with bringing someone in from a character's backstory, that was that was a like a serious, serious thing. I mm-hmm. wanted to make sure that I wasn't just bringing it into because <laughs> we should bring someone in. I wanted to make sure it was going to have a meaning, be a meaningful moment for everybody, right. um, viewers, the other players, everything. Yeah, and I think I've inadvertently created like a nemesis, which is perfect. Oh, you got to oh, do great. that. Axel yeah. nemesis <laughs> yeah. is the best nemesis. So, <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, Biceleb in the chat was saying he he doesn't really get Patreon. I think I think he's referring to um, making sure I'm following it correctly. Yeah, it looks like he's saying he that understanding uh, it as a method at all. Um, it'll be interesting it, because I'm going to go ahead and plug next week's guest real quick. Our next week's guest is that Boomer Kid, and he's mm-hmm, a content nice. creator who purely does all of his donations on ah, Patreon. So maybe we'll get to wow. pick his brain a little bit about that as well next week. So yeah. I need to do you guys Patreon? Make... Not we, yet. Do you guys Patreon we've anything? considered, but we have not. We have yeah, actually really looked into money stuff at all. Like we, we yeah. stared at it. We went, <laughs> and then uh, we, we were like, well, maybe eventually we'll look at it. But I mean, kind of going through and trying to figure out what in the hell to, to throw out there for people who do sub or do, mm do the patreon like what what could you give a fan that they would want right you know that wouldn't mm-hmm. also destabilize the experience that we're having you know and that's where i think i think the best things you can do are things it has to come from the dm in my opinion like mm. i guess it could come from players like but like my character bauer and he's a pirate and he got a trident and it already had a name levi gave it to me it had a name but like yeah. if it didn't you know I could put out there, give me, you know, talk to a sub and be like, you know, first sub donates 25 bits. I'll yeah. let you name my weapon. You know, like you could put yeah. things out there, give them some naming rights. Like I said, as it goes a long way, name the next mm. town we're going to. So what you do you know, think it is? Is it bit. just the fact that they're having a hand in shaping yeah. the experience? Is yeah. that what's the vital totally component? Oh, is I it the, having totally their name different. called out associated with it? Is it both? Like, like um, maybe the chat can help us out with that. You know, like what what would be something that would motivate you as a chatter or a potential sub well, or a follower to want? While, while we're waiting for the chat to type, let's. I mean, we're considering some of that right now. What we mm. may do with Wisdom Check for a very big episode we have coming up. Um, okay. You know, we we have um, a very big guest coming. We hope we sure do. Everything's still being finalized. Matt Mercer, everybody, well no. done. Oh, everybody. come on now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not too far off, though. Not uh, far off. Just last week, uh, we did a make a big announcement. So if uh, Dustin, you want to do it this week? I did it last week, and I was sure. excited about it. Um, we're very happy to be in contact with the people for Satine Phoenix to come on to the show in August, who is with uh, Geek and Sundry, I do believe, correct? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's good. She took over from Matt Mercer. Mercer. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's fantastic. We, so, you know, we've, we've been discussing, like, doing sub uh subscriber like submitted questions that we mm. would do on the air with when she's like things like that you know we're we're talking about things that wow. we want to do we haven't finalized anything but 
you know, we're always trying to think in those terms of like, mm-hmm. what do we want to give to the people that are given to us, you know? So mm. that's, yeah. a, I think that's something that I really struggle with. Like when we hit the uh, 200 followers on Twitch, people were like, Oh, what are you going to do to celebrate? And I'm like, what do you, what do you do? I have no idea what people... <laughs> what they're waiting for you to say is that you're going to give away something for free. That's like what they're here's some dice, yeah. everybody. I don't drawing. know. You're going to give away yeah. a copy of the book, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah. of funny because on my YouTube, like when I hit 100 subscribers, I was like a year into it, and I was like, mm. "Holy shit! Oh my god, 100 subs!" And you know, like somebody drew a picture for me, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool. I'm going to do my next episode. I'm going to like showcase it and say like, hey, my fan made this.'" And I hit 200 before I made my next episode. Oh, wow. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, like, now what do I do? And That's you know, awesome. people are like, you need to do a face reveal. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> you know, and now I'm doing this Twitch show every week, you know? So yeah. things have changed a bit, I guess. But um, it is funny because like, in that case, it was just a fan wanting to inject something that they had created for me to show their appreciation. Mm. Uh, Again, isn't that so weird that the way they showed their appreciation by doing like almost work for you like this yeah. when we had the guy that was doing stats for us i was like you're you're saying you you want to do work every week while we play because yeah. you like us so much it's, it just blew my mind and yeah. and jeff thinks i'm crazy for the amount of fantasy football stats i keep for the league that we're in <laughs> and then, you know <laughs> I do at least i'm playing in that league <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. which is coming up soon hope it is coming um, up soon <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, super fans like uh, that is what geeks do, right? Like we yeah. get way too invested in yeah. anything we're interested, in. and and that's that's cool. It's a wonderful thing. I mean, if you think of fandom for anything, you know, comic books, like what are they doing? They're they're buying everything, sometimes multiple times. They're they're going to conventions just to get a signing. Like mm-hmm. think about that. What if somebody came up to you and was like, "Hey, would you?" I don't know. There's nothing really realistically to sign, I guess, for us, but. You know, the, the digital example of that, whatever that would be like, if they came up to you and asked for a signature, you'd be like, uh, OK, <laughs> like, you know, like, but this like makes their day. They get to you yeah. know, show this off to somebody and, and apparently that's valuable. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know to us, we don't think of it that way. But, you know, as a super fan, it's that's mm-hmm. cool. You know, yeah, we get crazy egg chiming in down here. He can't talk because he's right behind me. But <laughs> you want to go ahead and read there, Jeff? Sure. Uh, Crazy Ike says, I support one content creator via Patreon. They have a special channel in this Discord, and he shares his content and uh, that he puts on YouTube with his Patreons first. Also, we add suggestions to his videos. Yeah, and I think mm-hmm. I know which one you're talking about. You're talking about cordless, I'd imagine. Um, and so, yeah, he gets, I, I don't know. I, I really do like that model of the throw it out there early for the, the fans and then mm. come afterwards. Um, even though I know our chat has said that, you know, smart people would wait. I, I don't think it's necessarily a, should you wait? I mean, obviously you can watch our content regardless for free, but people are still mm-hmm. subbing and I still don't know why, but I'm, I'm very happy <laughs> you guys do. So please don't stop. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, I think there's some quality to it there that goes beyond just watching. You know, like I think people appreciate what we're doing and or yeah. what you're doing. And, you know, people feel good about supporting mom and pop stores, you know, so like, I guess it's yeah. kind of equivalent, you know. Yeah, I guess yeah, in a yeah, way that's kind of the case. I mean, I think about that brick and mortar, uh, you know, shop that we went to, you know, for the gaming store. You know, it's like in a back alley somewhere, like no foot traffic at all. It's just like six or seven nerds in there all the time you know there's like a a shop cat walking around the place is like falling in on itself there's books that nobody's ever gonna buy you know this guy's like business model is underwater like five times over you know and you're like man i can get this book for like half the price you're selling it and it'll show up to me tomorrow but i gotta order from you and it's gonna take like three weeks to get here (sighs) but i'm gonna do it (laughs) yeah yeah. you know and i think it's the same kind of thing really yeah you know like i think it's if, I, if I tried to store. buy minis, a bottle of paint almost every time I go to the game store where I run game, I pick up something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like if nothing else, just because I got like a thousand dollar game table I get to play on, like it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's and I think that's it's it. I think cool. it's just it's just appreciation, right? Sometimes that that purchase or that chair or whatever or subscription. You I have had someone subscribe that didn't even um didn't even watch us live, but they oh. just wanted to like show the appreciation for, you know. 
us making the content. And I think that's all it really is. It's great. It's um, when you stop thinking of it as people giving me money and changing it to people are giving me appreciation. I just, I think that works a lot, a lot better. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it, it feels a lot better that way for, mm. for us stubborn, polite people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, the first. Uh, your mic is, seems to have directly, directly cut, cut out. There. Oh, it's okay. You're on now, but it okay. just cut off an entire sentence. <laughs> oh right. I was, now what was I saying? Oh yeah, the, the the first moment that we got any kind of subscription, or I, th- I think our first sub, we were just we just couldn't get it. Even when we were talking about when we we're bringing in, oh, you can donate money this way. So how awkward it was to even talk about it was just amazing. I'd lo- I should probably watch that again sometime just to see how awkward that was. <laughs> I remember our first donation. It was like 25 cents. And it was yes. on a rerun. It wasn't yep. even when we were live. It was like the I, we like we aired an episode and then I got in there and put it on for a rerun. And some guy hopped on there and donated a quarter. And this is before we yeah. were even affiliate. We were just like, it was like a, it was like a quarter. We were like, no. Nice. And it was really funny because I came on. I was like, oh, shit, thanks. And then he just took off. <laughs> I was like, God, we never seen him again. He gave us a quarter, ran, we've never seen him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of reruns, just since, since we're talking about styles, what, have you, do you guys have any luck with three? We have you know, like nothing. I, Zero. I, do most of, um, I do most of that sort of programming for us. Um, yeah. Mostly because I probably have most of the free time that's not spent making awesome 3D intros like Clint over there. Um, <laughs> I don't have that kind of technical capability, but I can hit a rerun button with the best of them. <laughs> so <laughs> I get in there and I do those sorts of things. We've we've actually gained followers, but the oh, weird nice. part is, is a lot of times I'll look and see like who those followers are, but they're not the people who ever seem to catch us live. So I'm not mm-hmm. sure because it doesn't tell you who the people are that are viewing your episodes after the fact. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I don't, when we, one of the episodes that we got the most views on, I reran a few times. Episode eight of Everstorm. We had two, I think it was 236 total views on it. That's which great. Which is the most any of our videos have ever gotten on anything we have done. I have right. dramatically cut down on the amount of reruns, and none of our current videos have gotten close to that mark. So, mm. I don't know if I feel like it was helping. I don't know if I'm catching mm. the same people clicking back on it again. Our video sessions are like five hours long a lot of times. Yeah. So yeah. it's a lot of long time running live. So that's yeah. a lot of time for people yeah. to click on to click because what's a view on Twitch? Five seconds, 10 seconds? Like how long yeah. you got to be on yeah, there for the registers? I don't know. It could yeah. be the same person coming on four different times during that video too. You know, I mean, I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, but, um, I think it's good just to be there as an option for people because. Not everyone could tune in live, but, you know, they can hunt and peck as their time permits. And that's that's why we're doing it on the YouTube for uh, the wisdom check. You know, it's are we getting a ton of views there? No, we're getting about, you know, seven to 15 per episode. Mm-hmm. Are they the same people that are watching right now? Maybe, but it could also be new people. And I, I think really that the, the power of these approaches. Holy shit. Thank you oh, so much for a mega cheer from Brazilla. That's awesome. Much appreciated, man. That's uh, is that 10 bucks. Can that is, actually work. that is 10 bucks. Thank you, man. Nice. Brazilla. Wow. He's been our longest sub and now he's our highest bits person yeah, as well. So go. thank you. Awesome. Much. Um, <laughs> that completely threw me off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right off his game. No, I remember yeah. what I was talking about. Um, yeah, so I, I think the, the power game of these platforms is circular promotion. Mm-hmm. So like on YouTube, like I always do a link to my um, particular playlist at the very start, you know, kind of floating across the top. Almost mm-hmm. nobody ever clicks it, but if somebody does, that gets them networked into all my videos. Yeah, and at the right. end, having the, the videos where they can click on, like, here's the next episode. And always having that there, having a sub thing that nobody ever presses, but it's there, you mm-hmm. know, so maybe one person does. And that's fine if only one person ever clicks it. If you have many points of reference to the same places, you have a higher chance of getting an audience to go there. And I think that's what we're doing successfully here is that, like, if we pick up one person off of YouTube and they can end up here on the live stream, yeah, that, that helps, you know, right. if that one person possibly shares our content with somebody else. That really helps, mm. you know, and we might reach things on Facebook that we'll never reach on Twitch, you know, and vice versa. 
So it's, it can go yeah. a lot of different directions, you know? And, um, you know, one question I did have for you, we kind of straight away from this topic, but you've been doing the podcast thing. We haven't tried that yet. Like, yeah, what is it experience like? Like, what's the process I, being involved on that? Yeah, I, I tried to, I wanted to really put in the least of amount of effort <laughs> to, to test the waters. That's really, I, I wanted to be possibly good, which was um, how, how little, how much editing, how, like, what's the least amount of editing I can do, but mm -hmm. take what I know about audio to make it sound better. Mm -hmm. Um and then and put it out there and see how it's done. So, like I said, we there's a lot of boring moments, like where you hear people clicking the mouse and like roll twenty throwing the dice out, mm -hmm. and then someone saying what they got. When you could easily, if you were editing it fully, you'd be cutting out a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I've just left it all in there. It's still, I think it's still quite listenable. But I realistically put in like thirty minutes of editing time. Like that's it. Yeah. That's all I put in, and that enables me to cut down. Um, our three hours down to about two and a half hours and, and, and put it live. Um, I think we've had, we had episode nine go live, uh, this morning. So we've, we're nine episodes and episode zero. So 10 episodes total in, and I think we've just hit a thousand downloads total wow. across that's, all that's of a them. lot of downloads though, man. That's great. It's not bad. It's good. Yeah. It's not bad, and we um. Uh, those, all, look, those are all the poor people missing out on all the really cool graphic stuff. You I know, know. I know, totally. <laughs> Um, uh, the one thing I did read up on was how to get your, um, uh, how to increase your chances of getting your podcast in like the new and noteworthy <laughs> sections of, mm -hmm. of iTunes or Apple podcasts. Um, and we've managed to get into the, we've stayed, we've probably been eight weeks in the new and noteworthy in the comedy section and about eight weeks in the new and noteworthy for the games and hobbies. But I just realized, I found out recently, it's only in the Australia, New Zealand uh, version <laughs> of iTunes. So, there do. Uh, yeah, I mean, but it's still, hey, that's good. That means there's enough New Zealanders and Australians listening to our stuff that is keeping it in there, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is awesome. It's really satisfying to see the little getting dicey logo in that, in that section. It really um, is. But stats behind podcasts are really, really bad. Um, mm -hmm. I think Apple, you need to sign that you need to have it set though, that so that you are giving Apple your information. Otherwise you get really limited info through the Apple podcast store. Mm -hmm. Spotify again, it's really, we seem to get pretty limited information from that as well. And the place we're hosting it, again, purely because I was trying to do it as cheap and as quick and as lazily as possible, um, the place we use, which is shoutengine.com, um, it's completely free up to a certain bandwidth per month. And I just knew we weren't going to hit that bandwidth anytime soon. So I thought, we'll go with that. We'll go for that. Their stats are just uh, like, their stats page is broken, like literally broken. You can see how well an episode's doing. You can see <laughs> downloads per day. But that's you can't see any stats for where people are downloading it from or any sort of statistics gotcha. there are. Sorry um, to interrupt here, but I've hit that sorry. point in the podcast where my overdose of coffee hits my bladder. So I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. It happens to him now yeah. and then. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, so go yeah, ahead. You were continuing. Yeah, so just just the fact that we've hit that that thousand downloads today was 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 awesome. Again. Uh, it's just weird to see that people are enjoying it in what I, 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 th I'm, I, I think I quite, I agree with you, Dustin, in the fact that they are missing out on a lot. They're yeah. missing out on a lot of the visual stuff. Just there, six that we do. Alone. Missing out on six hammer is just alone enough to. <laughs> yeah. So the podcast hasn't gotten up to that, but I don't know. That's not going to go down well. Only. No. For me. And, yeah. and I don't want to cut it out either, but I know it's not really right. going to make much sense. No, it won't. Like those are the kinds of things. Like when I think of those moments, and I'm like, I can't yeah. imagine just listening to that and not seeing yeah. it. Like, so it'll be interesting to see how you tackle those situations when you come to it. Like we yeah. haven't released a single minute of our EverStorm game on YouTube yet. Um, wow. We actually recorded the first four games not on Twitch. We didn't stream the first four. We actually recorded them as we played them. And I think right. Clint still has all that. <laughs> All those files stashed away somewhere. He's <laughs> nodding yes that he still does. So maybe someday they will see the light of day on YouTube. But you know we're we're at game session eighteen this coming weekend. And when you think about yeah. each one of them being multiple multiple hours, yeah. like if we started to go back from the beginning, recut, edit them, put in graphics here or there where we wanted to to try to even as you're condensing them down, like that's still mm. that's still hours and hours of 
Clint's life that mm. is going to go. <laughs> into some of this. Yeah. I mean, um, um, my but, attitude towards YouTube and podcasting, basically the same as my attitude towards streaming, which is just get started, just do it. Um, let the let the first few episodes be <laughs> terrible or because you know you're going to take it somewhere better over time anyway um and it was much easier especially for our stream to to add one one new cool thing every week and we're at a point now where the stream i think just looks looks fantastic and you look at our older stuff and it just looks terrible <laughs> absolutely terrible but it it also gives the any fans like that, the ability to look back and go, wow, these guys have actually, they, yeah. they haven't just, um, they haven't just made it or they, they haven't gone in trying to be perfect straight away. I don't yeah, know. I think there's no such thing humbled. as being perfect straight away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you you're doing something the wrong. first try, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. if, if you, if you're happy with your first version of a product and you don't make any adjustments, you're blind to, to change. I, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fruzilla was saying he was trying to figure out how to sub uh, to the guest. Oh, yeah. And we don't have oh. any good way of doing that. But as uh, Crazy Egg mentioned, we do have your guys' link to your channels on the oh, big yeah. panel down there with your with your logo. And we do that every week for our guests that's on here. Nice. So if they click on that at the end of the show, not right now mm -hmm. when we're talking, but when we're done, oh, yeah. Come on, yeah, don't leave click us. on that. <laughs> and that'll dump them right into your your channel where they can yeah. find you and follow. So or say that'd be also. hugely appreciated. That'd be yeah. amazing. Definitely do that. We got a lot of content creators on that Discord channel too that are doing a we ton do. of promotion there, and that's one of the mm. primary reasons that we have that Discord. So um, we should probably link the Discord in the chat here, but it's also going to be in the panels later on. And if you want to join us it, there, it please already do. is. Um, mm. This is a if you go down to the way. panels, you will see one. I just set it up this morning. It says you click on that, you get to our Discord. You click on another, it'll take you to our YouTube. Another one there takes you to our Twitter, and Perfect. then of course the one. The big dice there that's getting dicey the big dice that'll take yeah. you over there to and that's exactly you know what we want this for right so show up content creators can see what each other are doing learn from one another uh you know just get in there and chat with you know, the fans you know mm -hmm. fans can become content creators we can give some advice on the, the limited amount of success we've had <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of go from there you know, I think if you're playing if you're playing D, D in any format man find a way to stream it i would love to i would love to find a way and want to stream that on the channel as well at some point i think that'd be great fun to stream what like an in, like an actual play around a table and oh with yeah and oh, stuff. That'd be, yeah that'd be no, amazing. I, i've been considering to see if there's a way i could find a way to do it but mm. i don't have all the technology we did it one time for a right. live session and it was, it was a so fun it feat was of technological <laughs> that we had to go through to make that happen like yeah, the bet, cameras Getting things set up and hanging microphones from the ceiling, hanging microphones oh, from, wow, of from panels <laughs> in our DM ceiling, like it was, it was crazy. But we did one <laughs> session that way, so it'd be so a twelve-hour session. But it was, it, it was a long one. But it was, <laughs> yeah. Is it really too much to ask for? You know, enough money that in my house. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, support, yeah. support the channel. So get I on can... it. Throw get, getting dicey some money so you can make that happen. <laughs> so well, I can tear my house down and, and make a D D and D. That'd be amazing. Oh, oh that is so good. Yeah. I am checking the clock here, and we have caught up with you. You are no yeah. longer in the future. It is. It is now the <laughs> second here. Welcome, and, uh, welcome to Monday, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday. Welcome hey, I just Tuesday. saw a flying car. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think at this point we'll give you a chance again to plug the things that you're doing. Tell us a little bit about your. Again, what game you're running, where they can yeah. find you, what time they can find you. Okay, yeah, so we're, we're currently going through uh, the Fandel getting dicey on Twitch. Um, we are playing at 2.30 a.m. your time. All right, so if, you, <laughs> if you've got insomnia. For those of you who have to do further math, it's yeah. 2.30 um, central. Which is a normal time for us here in New Zealand, so 7.30 p.m. New Zealand time. Uh, <laughs> but if you've got insomnia or you hear some weird accents talk about things you know and love about D D. the by all means stop stop by and say hi um yeah i don't I know much else can do. i'm gonna at least check you on the vods because uh, i don't know about yeah, you yeah. Morning, uh, yeah i will be there to support you as i can because that sounds freaking it, awesome 
I'm yeah, telling we put you, up. I, I really think that Jeff and both Clint would really enjoy watching your show just from the pure technical aspect of nothing else. Like it's, it, it really is a fantastic thing to see. Yeah. Um, if people wanted to check out a little bit about uh, what we're like, we've got our episodes and highlights and recaps for all the episodes up on our YouTube as well. So you can sort of have a quick taste of, of what we do. Um, and I think you'll like it. I think, I think, I think it's entertaining enough. I think it's good. It is. I think it's good. Yeah, I love yeah. what I'm doing. Hey, if this I've used the word wildly entertaining, yeah. it's true. So. <laughs> okay, perfect. perfect. I've been having a great time just in this chat, so I imagine it's got to be good. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been umming and ahhing about whether or not any fruit because like um like um uh, dustin was saying we had the we had the stream deck uh obviously purchased thanks to the support and one of the things that i've loved is i've got i don't know if we can see that but like, oh yeah the, ca the character overlays are just a button press away for me which is which is fantastic and it's literally his screen fills with that NPC character, and all you see is his mouth moving when he's doing the voice. It's hilarious. There you go. Yeah, there it is. He's got it. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's a little so taste good. of the zombies. It's <laughs> so good. It yeah. is. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. we, have, we have those for all. 90% of the just, NPCs. As a little outro, give him a little give him a little uh the goblin. Do the goblin. Billy Goblin. Can you, voice, can't you? Can you summon the goblin for us one time? I know we don't have a rate <laughs> boss here for <laughs> what do we, what do we want? Is there anything we want? Okay, I've, I've got something yes. like uh, all right. Well, let's, let's bring... Billy, 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 <laughs> Billy the goblin. goblin, you are you there? He summoned the Billy Goblin. Yes! Hello! You think you can watch this without subscribing to TT2KV? Ah, you fool! And that's, that's so I just good. imagine that for two and a half hours, and that's his show. Right oh, there. it's so that's, freaking brilliant! Oh, that's Billy, that's Billy Goffman. Clint's downloading it. images to cut the mouths out now for our yeah, next, yeah, perfect. <laughs> And, and I do that unashamedly every week with uh, all, all the different NPCs. Yeah. Hey, if you're embarrassed at doing stuff, this is not the career for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we appreciate you coming on today, Ray. Get the time I, I, yeah, back here I, to talk to us. Um, yeah, I appreciate the invite. You guys are doing great things just for the, for the um, tabletop communities, guys. Really, really appreciate so. it. Yeah, we appreciate, appreciate you guys too, like you being in our Discord, uh, yeah. hopping in now and chatting up about whatever I'm posting for the day usually, and <laughs> and you know just helping keep things always moving along. So yeah, yeah and setting a great uh, example for else how there, we could be. You know, Jeff, where can everyone <laughs> find you at? Well, I have a YouTube channel called Rain Survives, where I do mostly <coughs> blitz plays of video games on ludicrously hard difficulties. Um, Sometimes blind. That's pretty fun. But right now I'm doing mostly ARC stuff. So if you like ARC Survival Evolved, I'm doing a lot of uh, admining stuff. So weird events on our server. And I'm also playing uh, Primal Fear, which is a, a mod for ARC. So lots of wacky dinos and stuff on there. So check me out over there. Great fun. And where can we find you, Dustin? Well, you can find me about everywhere these days. <laughs> It's getting to be an expensive list. First and <laughs> foremost, you'll find me here on TT2KB on Mondays doing the Wisdom Check with Jeff and a special guest every week. This coming Saturday at, I don't know, it's about 10 p.m. currently, where we may even start earlier this week. We haven't decided yet. But at 10 p.m., you will find our next Everstorm game, and that will be oh, game 18, yeah. which I don't have everything in front of me at the moment. Um, but we got titled today, and I forget what it is now. Open... Open hand, closed fist, I think is the name of the episode that Levi had dubbed it or something like that. Let's and that'll see. be this coming Saturday, 10 p.m. is Everstorm. I've got a one shot on August the 7th on Dad Bod D&D, where I'm going to be taking part in their one shot community that they're putting together. Um, I'm also now been invited to and have not yet appeared, but will be soon appearing on videos for the Notorious DMG group, which is Jowsum, Chuck, Bicep, who's in our chat right there, One Crit Wonder, and a few other guys that are all DMs who decided that if they ever wanted to be players, they would have to run games for each other. So they've <laughs> combined forces in order to get to be players and not just DMs their whole life. So they have invited me and I have... and. Uh, very very lucky to be a part of that group and i'll be 
appearing on their channels very soon. I'm also appearing on Defenders of Cobalt in a four, fourth ed game that's going to be on Thursdays coming up soon as well in August. So oh, you're going to be finding games up. It, it, the bigger <laughs> question is where won't you find me at? Um, and when I'm not doing all that stuff, you'll find me at Plague State where when my internet is not completely crapped out like it is right now and I'm not sitting in Clint's house in order just to be here tonight, you'll find me streaming some uh, Elder Scrolls online. And nice. playing very poorly because I'm no good at it yet. But I will get there. <laughs> It'll happen. Don't you worry. Hey, in uh, chat, if you like the sound of this microphone that Dustin's using tonight as opposed to his usual headset, go ahead and let us know that in the comments or in the chat over here on the side because uh, I really want to push for him to use this stupid thing because it sounds so much better. <laughs> so much better. My Razer Kraken headset, like it works well <laughs> for my normal gaming. It's just horrible mm -hmm. when i'm trying to host a stream with other people apparently so i apologize for all the noise <laughs> last week <laughs> it's all good i just like giving you our time uh, <laughs> it's a true story so uh yeah thank you guys so much i can't wait to see you guys next week and uh we'll see you monday Ta -ta. See you then. cool thanks